we welcome you through NoorSat satellite channel and Telumir TV. On the occasion of the blessed month of Ramadan, the NoorSat office in the Holy Lands of Jordan and Palestine, represented by its director, Dr. Basim al Sam'an, and the team, is pleased to extend greetings to His Majesty King Abdullah II and the Jordanian people, as well as to the Arab world. We hope that goodness and blessings will be bestowed upon everyone and that peace will prevail in Gaza and the Holy Land. Now let's start with the headlines. During his meeting with the Vatican Secretary of State, His Majesty the King emphasized the necessity of stopping Israeli violations against the sanctities in Jerusalem. The Holy Synod of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate approved the Christian family law for the Greek Orthodox. The Eastern Churches Department sent a message to churches worldwide to collect donations for Christians in the Holy Land. Welcome back. His Majesty King Abdullah II received the Secretary of State of Vatican City, Paul Richard Gallagher, at the Hosseini Palace. His Majesty King paid his greetings to the Holiness Pope Francis, reaffirming the depth of the distinguished relations between Jordan and the Vatican. The meeting addressed the grave developments in Gaza, with His Majesty emphasizing the importance of reaching a ceasefire in Gaza and ensuring the delivery of sufficient aid to the sector. He also warned against the necessity of stopping the attacks by settlers on Islamic and Christian sanctities in Jerusalem, cautioning against any escalation of the situation there and its potentially serious repercussions. His Majesty called for the unification of church positions in preserving the historical and legal status quo in the Holy City. Secretary of State of Vatican City appreciated Jordan's role in protecting and caring for the sanctities in Jerusalem under the framework of Hashemite custodianship over them. In the same context and coinciding with the 13th anniversary of the establishment of the diplomatic relations between Hashemite Royal Court and the Vatican government, Archbishop Paul Richard made an official visit to Jordan. He presided over a celebratory mass at the Nazarene Virgin Church in Amman, attended by his beatitude Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzabella, the President of the Council of Catholic Bishops in the Holy Land, and Council members, along with several priests, deacons, clergy, and believers in the Catholic Church in the Kingdom. Accompanied by the Papal Ambassador to Jordan, Archbishop Giovanni Pietro del Tasso, and Monsignor Marco Formica, he also made a field visit to the warehouse of the Jordan Hashemite Charity Organization. He commended the organization's work for its role in providing and sending humanitarian aid to the brothers and sisters in Gaza. During the visit, the Vatican official announced that His Holiness Pope Francis made a financial contribution to assist the people of Gaza through Caritas Jordan. The Archbishop's tour also included visits to the Caritas Center in Madaba, the Mercy Garden, the Mosaic Map, where he met with several dignitaries from Madaba Governorate. In celebration of Youth Day, Father Hanna Kildani, the pastor of the Nazarene Virgin Church in Swafia, presided over a divine liturgy with the assistance of several priests and deacons in the presence of a large congregation of believers. During the liturgy, new youth members of the church were appointed. Following that, an announcement was made regarding the distribution of charity collection among the attendees, the proceeds of which would support Nursat in its spiritual mission. Dr. Basim al Sam'an, the director of Nursat office in Jordan and Palestine, then provided an explanation of the purpose behind distributing the collection to the church's congregation and other churches. With the presence of over 5,000 individuals from various countries worldwide, Minister of Tourism and Antiquities Makram Al Qaisi participated in the Berlin Tourism Fair alongside 26 tourism offices. Al Qaisi highlighted the diversity of the Jordan tourism products with a focus on religious tourism, including the baptism site of the Jesus Christ and other Christian pilgrimage sites in the kingdom. He emphasized Jordan's readiness to welcome tourists from all over the world, ensuring their comfort. Al Qaisi also attended meetings with low-cost airlines. On the sidelines of the fair, several contracts were signed with airline companies aiming to boost the Jordanian market with foreign tourists, who would directly contribute to the recovery of the Jordanian tourism sector following the cancellation accompanying the war in Gaza. The ministry emphasized that the Jordanian pavilion received significant attention from top officials and tourism decision makers in the German market and various other countries worldwide. Bishop Atallah Hanna emphasized that Jerusalem, the city of peace, holds its esteemed position in the three monotheistic religions despite suffering from policies of racism that have reached their peak. He added, what is happening in Gaza cannot be comprehended by human mind. There is a destructive war targeting civilians, including a segment of children who are being traumatized in a painful manner. He further stated, we reject wars, killings, revenge and violence, and we demand justice in a land where justice has been absent for too long, so that the people of the Holy Land can enjoy freedom and dignified living in peace and tranquility in their homeland and in their Holy Land. He urged for an end to the war and the realization of justice in this blessed part of the world. 
On the other hand, the Eastern Church's department has directed a message to bishops worldwide, emphasizing the importance of organizing an annual campaign to collect donations for the benefit of Christians in the Holy Land due to the suffering they endure in the region. The message also pointed out that pilgrims to Jerusalem is an old age tradition, but many Christians are unable to endure the conditions and leaving the land where their ancestors prayed, abandoning everything and fleeing because they see no glimpse of hope for peace returning to the region. During the reception of a delegation from Georgetown University, Father Nabil Haddad, the head of the Center for Religious Coexistence, stated that the wisdom of Jordanian leadership and the ethics of Jordanians have made Jordan a model of harmony. This has been achieved through diligent efforts to promote a culture of harmony among followers of religions and the launch of the Hashemite initiatives such as the Amman Message, the Common Word Initiative and the Word Interfaith Harmony Week. Father Haddad explains to the visiting delegation, which included faculty, members and students, that Jordan has succeeded in using diplomatic dialogue among religions as a means to enhance efforts to resolve conflicts and counter extremist dialogues. He also provided the visiting delegation with a detailed explanation of the situation in the region, the conditions of Christians in the Holy Land and the relations between Muslims and Christians. In the same context, the program A Glimpse of the East, hosted by Father Nabil Haddad on Noursat TV, featured Imam Yahya Hindi, the religious guide at the university, in an episode titled Harmony Among Followers of Religions in the Face of Pain. The discussion revolved around the virtues of faith and compassion that should be reflected in our communities and behaviors. The dialogue emphasized that Jordan serves as a model of harmony among its people and should be presented as such to others. The Jordanian National Committee for Women's Affairs greeted Jordanian women for their achievements and tangible contributions to the advancement and development of society. In a statement released on the occasion of International Women's Day, the committee emphasized that these accomplishments are the result of collaborative national efforts between the committee, women's rights organization, public and official national institutions, supported by continuous political will and ongoing royal care and interest. The committee also affirmed its commitment to working with its partners and making efforts to overcome obstacles that hinder women's effective participation in national development. It praised the continuous and diligent efforts of His Majesty King Abdullah II on both the international and regional levels to hold the ceasefire in Gaza and to continue providing medical and humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza. After the approval of the Holy Synod of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate for the Christian Family Law for the Greek Orthodox, Archbishop Christophorus met with a wide range of citizens from various regions and governorates of the kingdom. The attendees included dignitaries, judges, lawyers and believers in the Wahhabi Tamari Hall at the Orthodox Club in Abdoun. The meeting focused on the new Christian family law with His Eminence explaining the law, its rationale and its legal implications. Subsequently, he answered some questions from the attendees addressing legal issues raised by lawyers and judges. The new law came into effect in all Orthodox ecclesiastical courts at the beginning of the current month. It includes significant amendments, notably regarding wills, adoption, inheritance, reconciliation, custody, establishing Christian family houses, and expediting judicial procedures, especially for issues related to alimony, visitation rights, and custody. Here, dear viewers, we have reached the end of our broadcast. Before we conclude, here's a recap of the highlights covered herein. During his meeting with the Vatican Secretary of State, His Majesty the King emphasized the necessity of stopping Israeli violations against the sanctities in Jerusalem. The Holy Synod of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate approved the Christian family law for the Greek Orthodox. The Eastern Churches Department sent a message to churches worldwide to collect donations for Christians in the Holy Land. For more details, please visit our website, nursacho.org. Thank you for watching, hope you have a pleasant time and hope to see you again.